Okay, here we are outside in, in Cardiff in the Brain Brewery. That's where they've got all these different barrels. The beer ready to go out. There's actually a lorry there loading up, ready to go. Some uh, a forklift driver picking some beer up. But we're actually up on the top of the platform here, and Bill's going to explain exactly what's going on at this part, this part of the brewery. Well, we're quite unusual here at the brewery where our coppers are actually outside. So the vessel behind you here, if you can just swing round and have a look. Right. This is the copper. As you can see, it's boiling away at the moment. So as you can see the steam coming out of the top. Yep. So we've got a nice boil on there. Look at that there. You can just see, if I just come over just a little bit more, you can just see the brains chimney then in the back is that chimney still in use yeah that's the that's the boiler house chimney so the, the boiler house at the back is generating the steam and the steam's been um he's boiling the copper here fantastic absolutely fantastic we've got a nice blue sky in cardiff this morning which you can't see because of the steam coming out of the <laughs> copper no and it's a real I, I always whenever i come to cardiff on the train i am a local boy in barry you always get the fantastic smell as soon as you get off the train when they're brewing you. Yeah. Oh, it's always a nice sight when you can see the steam coming out of the copper. Yeah. And it means things are working. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Is there a little window there we can look into? Uh, you won't see very much inside there, I'm afraid. Full of, so, full of steam. Yeah, it's uh, full of steam, so you won't see anything inside the actual copper. So how many of these have you got outside, Bill? So there's two coppers here. The copper holds about 260 barrels. Um, so we use them alternately. So the, the beer that you saw in the mash tun upstairs, that's, that's what's being... Um, transferred down here to the copper so the hops are blown into the copper here and the hops are going to be boiled up with the wort to extract the bitterness and some of the flavours in there fantastic okay great yeah look at that and if you want to turn around there you can see the back the other end of the process um, on the vehicles at the back there you can see being loaded up so we've got different customers vehicles being loaded up to take the product from site all the all the containers you can see out in the yard, these are all empty containers. I see. So these are all waiting to go on for the lines to be filled with different products. I see. Fantastic. Okay. Fantastic, yeah. And you just see a train disappearing in the background there, and the Millennium Stadium in the background. So that's where we actually come in on the train when I started this video. Great. So there's two barrels here on the, on the little cross of track. Just see the river tap in the background there. Just the other side of the wall. I'll see if I can just zoom into that. There you go. There's the river tap. That's Cardiff or Wales' biggest river. There you go. Okay. Lovely. Thank you, Bill. Cheers. Okay, so we're in the yard of uh, Brain Brewery. We're just going to take a look at the fermenters. Bill's going to explain exactly what's going on at this part of the process. Okay, well you've seen some of our small square fermenters. These are our bigger fermenters. Um, if you pan round, Simon, you can see the size of the vessels up there. Fantastic. So those small vessels that you saw filling earlier hold 90 barrels each. These can hold just over a thousand barrels each. Thousand barrels. So they're, they're 12 times the size then? Yeah. About 12 times the size? Yeah. And these work um, all year round? Exactly the same way. We're filling and emptying the vessels every day, putting fresh beer in into ferment and, and emptying it out at the end. The beer takes about a week to ferment in these vessels. Yeah. So the vessels are shaped like this so that the yeast settles out in the actual cone of the vessel. Okay. Yeah. So, so if we have a, you can see on the smaller vessel here the shape of the vessel. That's it. Yeah. It's funneling down. Yeah. And, then and that allows us to transfer the beer in and out of the vessel through the base of the vessel. Fantastic. And all up the side of the vessel are cooling jackets that carefully control the temperature of the beer in the vessel. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So does the weather, if you have like the hottest day of the year and the coldest day of the year, does it ever affect the beer bill or...? Well, they're all insulated vessels, so actually the climate inside that vessel doesn't really make much difference to it, whether it's hot outside or cold outside, because fantastic. there's a jacket or and it's insulated all the way around the vessel. If you follow me inside, we'll see underneath the vessels and the inside. Okay, fantastic. Okay. 
can see in here, Simon, are all the cones of all the vessels. Yeah. And the beer transfer pipe work to, to move the beer in and out of the vessel. But also, all the pipe work is also to clean the vessel. So every time the vessel is emptied, we clean it with either a hot caustic or a hot acid solution to make sure we clean off all the yeast staining and all the, all the residual that's left inside the vessel and making sure that it's really sterile as, we finish, as we've got a vessel ready to put the next, the next beer into. Fantastic. So... As we've seen from outside, we're actually underneath. We're underneath those vessels. So you see the cone shape at the bottom? Yeah. Yeah. And the insulation that's over the, the, the lagging. Um, this vessel's probably been pulled back, so we've got quite a cool surface on the bottom of the vessel there, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great. So this is where it all gets taken off. Yeah, what I'll do now is... Um, I'll take a sample of one of these vessels and you'll see how we measure what we call the gravity of the beer to see how much alcohol is in it. Great, fantastic. Okay, Bill. Okay, now we're going to take a sample out of this vessel. This is some Brains Bitter that we filled last week, so it's coming to the, uh, towards the end of its fermentation. Fantastic, look at that. It's coming out of that great big vessel that we've seen outside. Okay, so we'll take that now, Simon, and we'll measure the, the gravity of it, which will tell us how much alcohol is in there. Okay. So we measure the gravity with a saccharometer, and that's really a measure of... The saccharometer is measuring how much residual sugar is in there. The more of the, al uh, more of the sugar that's been turned to alcohol, the less sugar, so the less dense the beer is. Because alcohol is lighter than water, it reduces the gravity of the beer. Right. So by measuring the density through the saccharometer, we can see how strong the beer is and how much alcohol it's produced. I've always been interested to know this path. I've never actually known how they they give you that side of the, the 4.2 or the 4.1. But this is the way they do it, is it? Or you do it? This is the way we do it. We'll measure it later in the process more accurately, but at this stage of the process we're gauging the progress of the fermentation. Right. Because we're at the end of the fermentation, the beer's quite got quite a lot of CO2 built up in it, so you can see the amount of bob in there. Yeah. So we need to get some of that out, so that we can get a good sample. So the more alcohol that's in there, the further this will sink down because the beer will be less dense. I see. So do you take it really from there or do you take it out of there? We'll see what level it settles at. The more it's being poured out, the more you're getting rid of that head, if you like. It's just pure liquid now. the saccharometer are about 10.06, 10.07. So that's the final final gravity that we want to be for this beer. So we've had all the alcohol that's been formed now, and this fermentation is right at the end. 
So the next step is to cool that fermentation, and then we can remove it for the yeast, and then we can, we can process it back. Great. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Cheers.